Rolex Big Boat Series 2010, hosted by St. Francis Yacht Club. Hi, I'm Tucker Thompson, and welcome back to day number two of the Rolex Big Boat Series, one of the most challenging regattas on the planet here in San Francisco. But it's not just the conditions here that make it so difficult, as we found out from the competitors. Oh, the biggest challenge is getting the right group together that works together real well, and uh, everybody backs each other up. And I'm coaching the Warpath, so uh, just trying to keep them going the right direction, which is tough on land and on the water. I work for San Francis, so I'm just getting the boats in and out, getting them around the course, is keeping me busy. One of the biggest challenges is making sure you have the absolute right gear so you stay warm and dry in this area. Unbelievable sailing conditions. Yesterday came in like a drowned rat because the water was crashing over me the whole time, but it was fantastic. Biggest challenge doing this might have been getting the two days off of work. <laughs> I think avoiding getting hit by English boats. Though so yesterday I would say it was the fog, getting lost out there, dodging tankers, uh, trying to find the mark, current, crazy breezes, Alcatraz. San Francisco Bay current is nothing like we have anywhere on the East Coast that I'm familiar with. The other biggest challenge, I think, would be just to uh, keep the boat on our feet, and we hope it gets really windy. You know, the level of competition over the last couple of years just continued to go up. You, you look around and there's, there's no boats you think, oh, I can beat them. The racing is so close around every mark. You have to be spot on everywhere you go. It's going to be who can grind back from a 25 or an over early because it's going to happen. And you have to have the right group with you all the time and be able to grind back. So that's going to be the key of this regatta. Whatever the challenge, it's all part of what makes Big Boat Series so alluring. Add to the challenge a heavily favored committee boat end and a postponement flag. A big right hand shift will make this fleet start again. So IRCA will try again. We've moved down to the pin end where the race committee has reset the line. It's an even start for all the boats. Vincitori fights for the right side end again and gets it. IRCB is off the line next. Swiftsher, good start at the pin, currently leading the division. Suzal, who won the division last year, is hot on her heels. The race committee has reset the line. The current at strong ebb tide is increasing, and IRCC is approaching the line. Three, two, one, there's the gun. And the pin looks popular for the One Design 35s. Don't be over, hold it down till the last second. Bows go up. Well, there's the gun. We could have someone over. Yes. Jazz. Rough way to start the race. Pelagrosso and Vincitori have been trading places all week at this regatta. This time it's Pelagrosso's turn to lead IRCA into the lured mark. It's a big spinnaker to pull in. It takes four people on the foredeck and at least one down in the sewer to get that kite down and prepare for the upwind leg. Flash, then Mayhem, and Vincitori split gates here at the lured mark. Vincitori heads to the right, Mayhem to the left, so does Patches. Lanny Spond and crew are making it look easy in IRCB. As they head downwind aboard Pocapelli. Finally, IRCD heads upwind. 
along the city front, which is shrouded in what one expert told us is cross-directional moisture, but I think it's just fog. One design 35s and IRCA overlap with themselves. As the breeze drops here at the top of the racetrack and the ebb tide increases. Peligroso has been having a good race all the way around the track. Wire to wire, we're at the top mark with them as they hit into the offset for what looks to be a jive set. Beautiful job. It's August Ice with a narrow lead over her division, heading downwind with shoots up while Wasabi has a commanding lead in their division, heading back upwind. It's Double Trouble who slipped inside to give August Ice trouble at the lured mark and correction. Wasabi is in this division. They are the ones well out in front as second and third fight it out here incredibly close. Some of the tightest action all week is in the One Design 35. Zsa, Zsa takes an inside track. There's more breeze towards the shore. IRCD has rounded the top mark and are headed downwind. That's where we find Gerard Sheridan. Tupelo Honey won last year, and she's in the lead again. Heading towards the bottom of the track, the breeze has picked up and so has the boat speed for Wasabi, looking strong. Strong enough, in fact, for Dale Williams and crew to take a solid line honors victory in IRCC. A lead like that would not be possible in a jam-packed fleet like these Melgus 32s. Race number two, and they're off. And what a start it is for Taboo. After the 32s, the J120s. Chance looks like they've got the pin end nailed perfectly. There's the gun. And then the Express 37s, the fog finally starting to break. The breeze picking up. This fleet is off. Tommy Richards and Bill Bridge like this left-hand end aboard Golden Moon. The line has been lengthened for the final start. It's the J105s, 24 of them strong, and Spartan is in trouble down here at the pin end. There was the gun. They're well over early. Look for them to be spinning around sharply. And there it goes. They waited for the call from the race committee. They weren't the only ones. The J105s sort themselves out. With a now flooding tide, the entire fleet tacks onto port and heads for Alcatraz. Including division leader Bruce Stone's arbitrage. While those in the second row fight for clear air. 
tight action in the Melgus 32s on their way downwind. Everybody's on their A game with the upcoming World Championships here next week. And it's Blixum again out in front. The Express 37s are certainly well spread out as they head to the top mark. And it's back downwind for the J120s. Donald Payan's Dayenu holds on to a tight lead just in the 120s as they head to the lead mark. Back up wind and the top J105s approach the top of the course. It's jam session that leads this tightly packed group around the mark. Pinned out above the port tack lay line is a tough way to approach the mark. Three of them do while Brian Porter's full throttle leads the Melgus 32s. Wow. It's a crowded downwind run to the finish. With luffing battles going on behind them, full throttle takes the finish with ease. Well, we've now officially passed the halfway mark here at the Rolex Big Boat Series, and so far the biggest challenge for the fleet has been the fog and the light conditions. Who knows what tomorrow will bring, but one thing's for sure, we'll be right here to bring it to you. For now, I'm Tucker Thompson. Thanks for joining us. Rolex Big Boat Series 2010, hosted by St. Francis Yacht Club.